Hello everyone. Today I'll be taking you through a one hour flow. For our class today, you will need a strap or you might want one. You don't necessarily need one. We won't be using it for too long. Um, if you don't have a strap, you can grab a scarf. We're just gonna be using it to pull on just like so. So anything you can do that with, maybe a towel. Um, and we're doing it very briefly at the beginning of class. So if you don't have it, that's okay too. Uh, you will, however, for sure want a pillow to support the knees in lunges. Um, so grab a pillow or a couch cushion. Um, and let's get started, please, by sitting up on that pillow. And finding yourself in a cross-legged position, or you can find yourself with your tops of the feet on the mat and your seat moving towards your heels. You can even put the cushion between that's comfortable for you. Today I'm going to sit on the cushion with my feet out in front. Find yourself in a comfy seat and bring your hands to your thighs and just land here as we start in a meditation together. So close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. And keep your gaze gently to the tip of your nose. Just land here, maybe letting go of everything you were doing before, maybe letting go of anticipation of what happens next. Today we'll be focusing on cultivating patience. And patience is certainly a skill that some people might naturally have more than others. And yet we know that we can move towards the skills that we'd like to build or cultivate. And I chose patience today because it seems like we're in it for the long haul in this situation that we found ourselves in. We're unsure of what the future will hold and patience is ultimately the ability to manage distress, the ability to manage delay or tolerate the way things are, even though we'd like to perhaps rush them along. So as we think of that, start to breathe nice and evenly in and out through your nose. Just land in the present moment, anchoring awareness to breath. Become aware of breath the moment that it begins. Follow it through all the way to the top. And then follow it all the way down as it passes away. And then do that again for a few rounds, covering the entire breath with your awareness. Good. I'd like you to imagine a white light above the crown of your head. Can you imagine the white light piercing right at the top of your skull and starting to move down your skull, your throat, through heart space, through the abdomen and anchoring you down into the floor. Find that sense of rootedness here. Really letting your pelvis drop and feeling your crown lift up ever so slightly towards that white light, imagining it flowing all the way through you and down into the earth. Just allowing your experience to be as it is. So we're not pushing away any thoughts or sensations, anything that might be uncomfortable. Just allow it 
to be exactly as it is. And I'd like you now to imagine that this quality of patience is in front of you. If you'd like to choose a different quality that you'd like to cultivate, you can also do that. So if there's something you feel like you need to make it through this time, maybe self-compassion, bravery or courage, kindness, anything that you feel that you would like. My suggestions is patience. Imagine that that is coming out in the space in front of you. And I'd like you to start to reach your arms up in front of you as if you were grabbing towards it. Just take a moment here to notice the muscles that work as we do this. So back body, shoulders and arms. Notice the subtle effort that it takes to keep our arms out in front and then reach your arms out just a little bit more, maybe with your fingertips. Imagining that this was a quality that you could reach out for and it could be yours. Take a deep inhale here. And as you exhale, slowly start to open your arms up into this hug almost and linger here. So your arms are out nice and wide. Again, feeling the muscles that it takes to get us here and keep us here. And then start to tune in to what it feels like to open up to a possibility. Can you relax into this? And then slowly start to draw that energy in towards your body. Please don't rush this. Bring the energy in towards your body and let your hands linger a few inches away. Feeling the energy between your body and your hands. And do that a few more times. Slowly start to reach your arms out in front of you as you inhale. And as you exhale, open up to the possibilities. Inhale as you slowly start to draw that in towards your body. And exhale, linger here for a moment. One more time like that. Inhale, reach your arms forward as if you could have this thing almost in front of you. Breathe out and open up. Breathe in and draw in. Breathe out and linger with your hands here. Inhale, bring the energy in towards your body. Exhale, stay here. Slowly remove the pillow out from underneath your seat. Bring your left sole of the foot into the inner line of your right thigh and reach your right leg out long. Grab your strap. And go ahead and reach the strap out in front of you. Make it so that it's taut and you can reach your arms out, um, pulling on the strap. And then reach your arms up ahead of you. And if you don't have a strap here, that's totally fine. You reach into Urdhva Hastasana arms. Otherwise, pull the strap. And then I'd like you to get the sense of your pelvis heavying as you reach the back of your rib cage off of your pelvis. Relax your shoulders, pull with your hands and look up. Breathe deeply into the back body as you lift the back of your heart up. If 
few more rounds of breath, just like this. Inhale, reach your arms up, get even taller. And then exhale up and over to your right. So in the same direction that your extended leg is. And then instead of seeing how far over you can get to the right, see how heavy you can make your left side pelvis. Right away you'll feel a stretch in the left side body. Just enjoy that and take a few breaths. Close your eyes or steady your gaze. And then slowly start to reach your right hand forward, left hand back as you open up into a twist. Look up, make sure your forehead is higher than your chin and sing nice and long through the spine, twisting around it, a few deep breaths. If this is too much, you can even bring your hands to heart center, that's plenty fine. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, drop the strap. Switch directions. So you'll bring the sole of your right foot to the inner line of your left leg. Get comfy here, get settled. And then again, grab your strap. Reach your arms out in front of you and straighten your arms. Pull that strap nice and taut. And then breathe in as you reach your arms up overhead. And find a length that feels good for you. Relax your shoulders, lift the back ribs up and look up. Heavy your pelvis here. Keep your left toes nice and bright and spreading. A few breaths just like that. Good. Then inhale, reach your arms up even higher. Breathe in. Exhale, reach up and over to your left. And then instead of seeing how far over to your left you can go, see how heavy you can make your right side pelvis. And really breathe into that right side of the body. Close your eyes or bring your drishti, your gaze to the tip of your nose. Really expanding through the right ribs and the right lungs. Last breath like this, deep inhale. Slowly start to tip your left hand forward, right hand back. As you twist around your spine, look up. Let your face be really passive here so the skin of your face almost melts down. And breathe along the entire length of the spine. Last deep breath like this. And then slowly come through center. Release the strap out of the way. Bring your pillow nice and close so you can grab it when we need it. Plant your palms and then find yourself in a tabletop shape with your knees underneath hips, hands underneath shoulders. Spread your fingers here intelligently, nice and evenly. And we'll make our way through a few cat calves. So drop your belly, tip your tail to the sky, look up. And then deep exhale as you curl your navel underneath and find a cat pose. A few more times like that. Inhaling through cow, finding a back bend. Exhaling into cat, breathing into the backs of your back of your shoulder blades. A few more times like that, on your own time, on your own breath. Can you be patient with the body here? So we're not waking it up with pots and pans, it's like having an alarm clock that's that sunlight alarm. Gradually loosening the grip of everyday stress, and being patient with ourselves as we do this. Let the practice seep in really slowly, just like the teachings of this practice seep in, maybe over, over the course of a lifetime. Good. From cat cow, you'll bring your hands forward a paw print. Tuck your toes underneath you and lift your hips up and back into downward facing dog. Push into your hands and reach your seat back even more so you can get your hip creases as far away from your hands as you can. And then close the mouth of your ribs and breathe into the back body for a few breaths. 
the point of this pose is not to get the heels to the ground. Instead, it's to see how much length we can get through the spine to bend your knees as much as you need to. Good. Slowly bring your right knee in towards your nose as you round forward. Shoulders stack above your wrists. Take an inhale here. Exhale, bring your right foot to your right thumb. And bring your back knee down to the ground. Bring your pillow to cushion it. Good. And then slowly start to stack your spine vertebrae by vertebrae. Reach your knees, make your right foot forward slightly so the um, knee is stacked on top of the ankle. And then bring your hands to your low back. A few options here. You can let your fingertips point down. Or you flip your palms so that your fingertips point up. And this will be more intense. I'll take the first variation today. Can you feel the support of your hands on your low back to lift up through your chest? Can you find a gentle pull of your right hip back and your left hip forward? Can you feel length in all four sides of the neck and look up here? Just feel what it feels like to have the hands supporting the low back here. Opening up slowly, no energy tugging against one another, just really, really gently. And then keep the imprint of your hands on your low back, the image of them, the feeling of them, but reach your arms up. Take a deep inhale here. And then cactus your arms so your elbows come in line with your shoulders. Inhale your fingertips back, elbows forward, and find again the containment in your low belly, reaching the navel in towards the spine to support the low back. Take a deep inhale here. And then slowly start to raise the fingertips down. Plant your palms and lift up and back into downward facing dog. Take a few deep breaths here in downward dog. And then slowly start to bring your left knee into your nose as you round forward into plank. Take a deep inhale, just like this. Exhale, step your left foot to your left thumb and bring the right knee down this time onto the pillow. And then stack your spine. Bring your hands to your low back once again. Feel that your shoulder blades are moving in towards one another. So let that gentle kiss of the shoulders reach your heart up to the sky. And then pull your left hip back as your right hip pulls forward. And then steady your gaze to the tip of your nose or on a place on the wall, perhaps, that's not moving, and just breathe here. In and out steadily through the nose. Always return to this. Let the breath ground us in the present moment. Slowly reach your arms up to the sky as you breathe in. Exhale, cactus your arms, spread your fingers wide. Inhale, tip your fingertips back as your elbows tip forward. Keep the imprint of your hands on your low back to support your back. You deep breaths like this. Relax your jaw and your face. And then slowly start to rain your fingertips down to the mat. Plant your palms, step yourself back to downward facing dog. From downward dog, look forward, lift your right hand off the mat just a few millimeters so it hovers. And then slowly start to step it back. And then lift your left palm up off the mat just a few millimeters and step it back. And then can you just inch by inch start to step yourself back so that you're in a forward fold at the back of the mat? Maybe you ditch the pillow there, so it's not in the way. And then let yourself drape over your legs here in Uttanasana. You really let go of your upper body so you feel quite a satisfying stretch in the back body, in the low back, across the upper back. And then really let your brain drop here. So you enjoy a stretch in the cervical spine. Maybe imagining all the tension and stress from the day just seeping out of your skull and onto the mat. Few more breaths like this. Let your hands ragdoll down, maybe feeling the weight of your hands 
pulling you a little bit farther into this fold. Again, bent knees if that's comfortable for you. There's no need to have our legs straight. And then bend your knees even more as your hands come to your shins. Reach into a flat back. Breathe in. Exhale, fold forward and down. Two more times. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, drape over your legs. Last time, flat back, stay. Bend your knees even more. Lift your shoulders slightly so they're not hanging down. And then look to the top of your mat and maybe consider that there's a long journey ahead of us. What does it feel like to be at the back over here? Can you be okay with that? Can you be okay with incremental steps forward? Very deep, guys. Inhale and flat back. Exhale, drape forward. Walk your hand back down into downward facing dog to the front of the mat. And then roll yourself forward into a plank. And you get to decide here whether you'd like to find yourself in a high plank with your hands stacked above your, uh, with your hands stacked underneath your shoulders, knees are pulling up, engaging the quads. You bring your tailbone into your body. And if that's too hard, that's fine. Be where you are, knees come down, lift your skull up, take a deep inhale. And then ever so slowly, you lower yourself down to the mat. Bring your hands in by your low ribs, spread your toes, and as you inhale, lift into cobra, but lift your legs up as well. And then stay here. So this is cobra shalabhasana hybrid. Spread your toes, pull yourself forward with your hands gently. Take an inhale. And then exhale, lower your legs and lower your chest. Two more times, nice and simple like that. Inhale, reach your legs up, reach your chest up. Exhale, lower both down, nice and slow, resisting gravity. Last time like that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, lower down. Tuck your toes, breathe in as you push to the top of a push up. Exhale, up and back, downward facing dog. From downward dog, move through honey as you lift your right leg up to the sky, super slow. Exhale, look forward, step it between your hands to your right thumb. Inhale as you find a runner's lunge. So reach your arms alongside your body. Keep your back leg super straight. Come up onto the tippy toes here and then pull your right hip back. Can you find engagement right at the top of your left thigh? And then reach your fingers back as your crown reaches forward. And then I challenge you here to lift your toes. So find the work in the quads and hamstrings of lifting your toes and grounding into your heel. Almost as if you were at the beginning of a race. And if you're a runner, you know that running takes patience. A few more breaths like this, maybe feeling the temperature of the body rise. Bring your hands to your low back and then slowly bend your back knee as you lift yourself up into a crescent lunge. So with your back knee bent, that opens up space here in the front of the hip. Pull your right hip back. And then reach your heart up to the sky as you breathe in and breathe out. Just like we did on our knees here. Inhale your arms up to the sky. Keep the memory of your hands supporting your low back. Exhale, cactus your arms. Inhale, tip your fingertips back, elbows tip forward. And then exhale. Bring your back heel to the midline of the mat and find yourself in warrior two. Set up your warrior, make sure your right knee is rolling out. Make sure your back leg is strong and your back toes are pointing 45 degrees forward. And then just land here in the breath. Slowly reach your right arm up and back, reverse warrior, inhale. And as you exhale, you bring your hands to your hips. Step your back heel in slightly. Bring the back of your right hand to the inner line of your right knee. 
We're moving into half moon pose, Ardha Chandrasana. The tendency in that pose is for the knee to roll inwards. Use the back of your right hand as feedback. And for Ardha Chandrasana today, we're not moving into the full pose because we're keeping our hand on our knee. So we're just lifting our back leg ever so slightly. Maybe you straighten your right leg as much as you can. Keep it rolling out to the right, the knee. And then tuck your right um, sit bone underneath you. Can you find the work in your left oblique here to keep you lifted? Maybe you keep your hand on hip, feeling the engagement of the oblique, or you lift your left arm up to the sky. Deep inhale here. And as you exhale, fold at the top of your mat like nothing happened. Inhale, find a flat back. Plant your palms and you decide if you lower down to the ground and find Shalabhasana or you meet me back in downward facing dog. Wherever you are, you take three rounds of deep, even breaths. Maybe finding child's pose if you need a break. Inhale, reaches your left leg up to the sky. Exhale, look forward, step your left foot to your left thumb. Inhale, find your runner's lunge, reach your fingertips back, and reach your left hip back, right hip forward. Come up high onto the right tippy toes and straighten the leg by pulling up on the kneecap and finding the work in the quad and right at the top of the hip. Reach your fingers back as your crown reaches forward and then lift your toes and ground into your left heel. You should feel your glutes fire up, your leg fire up. A few more breaths. And then bring your hands to your low back again. Slowly start to lift up into a crescent lunge so you can bend your back knee here. Reach your left hip back, right hip forward, and then reach your heart up to the sky and enjoy the breath here. You can bring your back knee down to the ground if you need a bit of a rest. Otherwise, your elbows and your shoulders kiss on your back so you can shoot your heart forward and up. And Keep the memory of your hands on your low back as you reach your arms up. Exhale, cactus your arms. Inhale, tip your fingers back, elbows forward. Exhale, spin your back heel down to the midline, open up warrior two, step inside. So again, tendency of the knee to fall inward, keep that left knee rolling out. Keep that right leg super engaged and the toes pointing slightly forward. Steady your gaze over your front middle finger. And breathe. You know where we're going and yet. Can you just be in this pose now? Inhale reaches your left hand back and up. Exhale, hands to hip, and we set ourselves up for Ardha Chandrasana, stepping our back heel in. Left hand to the inner right and our inner left knee. And then slowly start to float your back leg up off the mat. Flex the toes, and then really tuck your left sitting bone underneath you, opening up through the front of the hips. Maybe your right hand comes to your right obliques. So that you can feel how strong they have to be to be lifted. Keep your left hand making sure that your left knee doesn't roll in. Maybe your right arm reaches up. Kick back through the back heel, open up through the pelvis. Take a deep inhale. Look at the floor and fold at the top of your mat. Like nothing happened. Inhale, find flat back. Palms to the mat, step back into plank, and you decide whether you make your way through a flow or you meet me back in downward facing dog. 
from downward dog. Bring your knees down to the earth and sit back onto your heels. Again, you can grab the pillow if that's more comfortable, placing it on top of your heels and sitting back like that. Hands to your thighs. Close your eyes here. And just notice. Just notice the sensations in your body. Can you move away, away from the intellectualization or move away from that cognitive reel? It's going all day. And just tune in to what are the sensations? Temperature. Any tingling, any tightness or expansion. And when you zero in on sensation, does it shift? Does it intensify? Or does it lessen in intensity? Just explore for a few more rounds of breath like that. Good. Bring the pillow out of the way. You can pat it. Plant your palms, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. From downward dog, walk your hands to the back of your mat. Again, find your forward fold. Enjoy that for a few rounds of breath. And then bend your knees. Keep your fingertips on the mat and then reach your arms up into Utkatasana. My shoulders are quite tight today, so I'm going to reach my arms in front of me. And I'm going to bring my hand to my belly to make an adjustment here. So sit back, like as if you're about to sit into a chair. Notice the tendency of us to dump into our lower backs. I use my hands to pull my belly up and in, and I reach my chest up. And I feel my heels here as I reach my arms forward. And then sit lower. Reach your belly in and sit lower. Find a few breaths here. This is the pose I find I'd like to move out of as quickly as possible. So let's just practice a few rounds of breath. Patience here. And what is patience if not the realization that we can deal with hard things? Inhale just like this. Exhale, drape yourself forward. Walk your hands into downward facing dog. We'll move through a flow. Now that you know the movements, see if you can melt into a moving meditation, linking breath with movement. Don't overthink this. Just see what comes up. Inhale your right leg up to the sky. Exhale, step it to your right thumb. Reach into runner's lunge, fingertips back. Inhale. Hands to your low back. Exhale. Reach into a crescent lunge with your hands on your low back. Inhale. Heart lifts to the sky as you breathe out. Arms up to the sky. Inhale. Cactus your arms as you exhale. Tip fingers back, elbows forward. Breathe in. Warrior two. Breathe out nice and easy. Inhale, right arm up and over. Exhale, hands to hips, set up for half moon. Inhale, bring your right hand to your right knee and lift up into half moon. Exhale, fold at the top of the mat, nice and gently. Breathe into flat back. Palms come down to the mat, step back into plank. You decide whether you make your way through a flow, lowering down, inhaling through your back bend, exhaling up and back, downward dog. So the flow is completely optional. You can just find your way into down dog or child's pose if you need to. Let's move through the second side. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, step it to left thumb. Inhale, find your runner's lunge. 
Exhale, hands to low back. Inhale, find crescent lunge with hands on back. Exhale, lift your heart up. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, cactus arms. Inhale, tip your fingers back, elbows forward. Exhale, warrior two, land to the left. Inhale, left arm up and back. Exhale, hands to hip, set up for Ardha Chandrasana. Left hand to inner left knee, lift it to Ardha. Exhale, full top of mat. Inhale, find flat back. Exhale, plant your palms and you decide whether you make your way through a flow or back, downward facing dog. In downward dog, can you commit to complete and total stillness? And we'll be here for the count of five breaths. For five. For four. For three. For two. Last one. Let's do that flow one more time. Now you know where we're going. Can you really just let your body move with it, become one with the practice? Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, slowly step it through. Inhale, find your runner's lunge. Exhale, hands to low back. Bend back knee, crescent lunge, breathe in. Heart lifts to the sky, breathe out. Reach your arms up, inhale. Cactus arms, exhale. Tip your fingers back, elbows forward, deep inhale. Land in warrior two as you breathe out. Right arm up and back as you inhale. Exhale, set up for Ardha Chandrasana, hands to hips. Back of right hand, inner right knee, lift to Ardha Chandrasana. Exhale, fold at the top of the mat. Inhale, find flat back. Plant palms, step, step back to plank, and you make your decision, flow through or downward dog. But let your breath guide you, so if you can't breathe evenly and calmly, skip it, please. Inhale, lift left leg. Exhale, step it through. Inhale into runner's lunge. Exhale, hands to low back. Bend back knee, inhale, crescent. Exhale, lift your heart. Inhale, reach arms up. Exhale as you cactus. Inhale, tip your heart open. Exhale, warrior two, land here. Left hand up and back, breathe in. Hands to hips, set up for Ardha Chandrasana, breathe out. Back of left hand, inner left knee, lift the Ardha, modified nice and high. Exhale, fold at the top of the mat. Last vinyasa of the day. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Plant palms, step back. I would be back in downward dog, but if you would like to make your way through a flow, please. And then bring your knees down to the earth. Arrange yourself so that your hips are over top of your knees. Come up onto your fingertips, reach your arms out long, and simply melt your chest down. And if your forehead reaches the ground, then you can rest it there. But stay active in your fingertips as if they were cupcakes underneath that you didn't want to smush. So it's almost like this suction action 
We're not dumping into the finger joints. Instead, we're finding this pulling action almost. And then breathe into the armpits, maybe experimenting with closing the mouth of the ribs and breathing even longer into the side body. Just explore here. And then tuck your toes underneath and slowly drag your fingertips back. We'll sit onto our heels with our toes tucked under. So this can be very intense. If your spine can't stack because your toes can't take that pressure, that's fine. You can bring your fingertips forward and that can be plenty of a stretch in the feet. Know that the more you do this, I've been doing this almost every day for like a month now since I rediscovered it, this will get easier to sit up nice and straight. Notice the tendency of the heels to splay out. Can you hug them into center? Patience is staying with discomfort, but not staying with pain. Yoga is figuring out the difference. Close your eyes if that's comfortable. Steady your breath nice and smooth, nice and even. A few more rounds just like that. Slowly walk your fingertips forward, tops of the feet to the earth. Sit back onto your heels. That should feel quite nice, letting the blood rush back. Good. The next pose we'll move through together is Uttrasana, camel pose, which can be quite intense. So I'll urge you today, I know there's some longtime practitioners in this class, to step back from the most intense version of this pose, where you don't have to put your, push yourself to the brink. And instead of being demanding with yourself, can you scale it back? Maybe that's a practice in life for those type A personalities who do yoga. I used to think I could win at yoga. Now I know, it's not a competition. So let's be kind. Tuck your toes underneath you and stand onto your knees. I encourage you to use a pillow here. Again, let gentle and compassionate be the name of the game. Stand onto your knees here and bring your tailbone into your body. You feel your hips opening up as you do this. Bring your hands to heart center. Take an inhale into your thumb. And exhale, just reach back on the diagonal so you're one long line from your knees to your crown. And then from here, let the movement be in your thoracic spine. So as if your hands were still on your low back, Place them there if that's supported. Reach your heart up and let the movement come from the spine that's attached to your rib cage. Not the spine in your low back. That gets enough movement. Find a few breaths in your Ustrasana. This is just one of three, so you can go deeper later if you like. Last deep breath. Slowly push your hips forward to come out of this. And then untap your toes and sit back into your heels. Maybe placing your hands onto your body if that's calling to you, just land here. Ditch intellectualization and tune into what you feel in your body. Become aware of all the sounds around you. Become aware of the sensations in your body. Become aware of your thoughts floating by. And notice you don't get to pick any of those things. You're just an observer. Two more rounds with stress enough. Stand up onto your knees, tuck your toes underneath you. Bring tailbone into body as you open up through the frontal hips. 
You can bring your hands to heart once again or fingertips point down on your low back. Take an inhale as you are. Exhale, reach back on the diagonal. Inhale, lift up through the heart. If it's calling to you to bring your hands down to your uh, heels, you're welcome to do that. Stay long through your neck. Keep your navel to spine. Stay safe. Take a few breaths. And then slowly push your hips forward to come out of this. Sit back onto your heels. And just notice. Any cracks or pops? Can we welcome them in? Just notice, find your breath. Curiously exploring what happens for you as you do this. Last round of Ustrasana, stand onto your knees, tuck your toes. If you like, where you can leave them untucked if you'd like to go a little further. Tailbone into body. Lift heart up, hands can be in prayer. Back behind you on your low back, you get to decide. Take an inhale as you are. Make your way into your Ustrasana. Let your breath be super deep. During hard times, can we let the breath nourish us? Last deep inhale. Push your hips forward to lift yourself up and then sit back onto your heels and once again, just notice. Remove the pillow out from underneath your knees. Move your heels out of the way and sit onto your bum. Soles of the feet down to the earth. Hands on the backs of the thighs and we'll do a modified uh, boat pose. So just pull on the backs of your thighs and sit up nice and straight. If there's another variation of boat you'd like to do, if you want to like to do the more intense one with the feet tabletop, that's all right or you can scale it back for today. Again, lifting the heart up as you pull on your thighs. Focus here on strength through the core and use the biceps to pull, but let your neck be super soft. Maybe you wanna roll your jaw out a few times or scrunch up your face. And then slowly from your low back, you start to round and make your way down onto the mat. Have your knees in towards your chest. Rock side to side and experiment with bringing your knees in even closer to your chest and the massage will come up your back. So just explore here. We can think about how much we miss massages and yet we can give a little bit of love to ourselves. So just rolling back and forth here. Maybe you let the knees fall away from the body and your arms straighten. Rolling onto the below the tailbone and around the glutes. Bring your knees in towards your chest, arms into a T-shape or cactus if you don't have room. And then let your knees fall over to the left. Let your right shoulder heavy down towards the mat. And then for today, I'll encourage you to look in the same direction as your knees. You don't have to commit to doing something at the same time each time, so you don't have to look over the right. Try something new, perhaps, and see what it feels like. And then let your entire weight of your body fall down. Just find your breath. In these restorative poses, we let the benefits of our practice seep in so that we begin to not only think about patience, but we begin to embody it. So 
This practice changes our brains so that we can respond to stressful situations with grace, or at least move towards that. Last deep inhale into the right lung, right ribs. Navel to spine, supporting your back as you slowly start to roll back through center, knees back of the hips. Take an inhale through center. And then slowly let your knees fall over to the right, this time left shoulder heavies. And if you like to use the pillow to support underneath your right knee or between your thighs, if there's a huge gap, then please set yourself up. And then look in the same direction as your knees for today if you'd like to try that out. Maybe you enjoy rolling around on the skull here, noticing that the skull is not round. All the things that yoga teaches us. Just breathe here. Soften your face. May the left shoulder be so heavy. Let go of any effort here. Last few deep breaths into the left ribs, left lungs. Inhale as you slowly come back through center, support your back by navel to spine. And then bring the soles of your feet to touch as you fall into Supta Baddha Konasana. So the knife edges of the foot, the pinky edges of the feet are on the floor and the soles of the feet kiss as the knees splay out. If your knees are up super high away from the mat, you can bring your hands into fists and use that to support your upper thighs. And if that doesn't feel good because it's not enough support, you can simply stretch your legs out long as the next pose is Shavasana. Otherwise, spend a few moments here in Sukta Baddha Konasana. This pose signals to me openness and vulnerability. So can we practice soothing ourselves when we feel exposed. Soften the space between your eyebrows and furrow your brow and let your face relax. And then slowly stretch your legs out long in front of you. Flip your palms so that the palms face up to the sky. Find Shavasana. Shavasana is a pose where we practice patience because it can be hard to let go. Our no normal response is to seize our muscles as if we are mounting an attack or a response. And yet here for the next five minutes, you have nothing to do. You've committed this time to you. So can you practice letting go and understand that letting go is a process? Incrementally, we practice letting go of tension in the face. In the shoulders and the heart space and the stomach. And the hips and our legs and our feet. And our hands and our forearms and our upper arms. Just let go. Let go of a need to manipulate anything. Just be with what is. Be with breath, the way that it comes in and out.
Can you not ask anything of yourself here? Except to be present. Can you create space here to hold and nurture yourself? Cultivating a relationship of kindness and compassion. Know that you can always begin again. So right here in this moment, ditch whatever came before and any anticipation of the future. Just start the practice again. And in the last minute, start again, again. Practicing presence and patience. Before we move, become aware of the sounds around you. Become aware of the sensations in the body. Become aware of thoughts in brain. Just be with it all at once. And then slowly start to breathe a little bit deeper. Find a stretch from your toes as you reach your arms overhead all the way to your fingertips. Roll over onto side body and make your way up into a comfortable seat. Bring your hands to prayer in heart center and we bow our chins in slightly, taking a moment to be grateful for this practice and all that it can teach us. I'm so grateful I get to practice with you. Thank you so much for coming. Let me know. If there's any way I can be helpful to you, if you have any questions or just want to say hello, namaste. Thank you guys so much.